got uh, some of the speakers on. Can you come up? Uh, when, it's, when it's time to come up. Okay, so that puts your recommendation of sentence. Well, the state's recommendation of the law, unfortunately, the two classes in this case, can be five hundred dollar fine plus penalty assessment, uh, 12 months in the House of Corrections, with all the 60 days spent for a period of two years based on good behavior. Uh, the state's based on the fact that the defendant has a prior conviction for a truck and government administration in class A in this community where he served time back in 2010. Uh, also, a criminal trespass uh, class A in this community in 2010, and another truck and government administration uh, in 2010. Uh, another house questions jail sentence uh, attached to that. Uh, the courts heard this one for this concurrent recommendation. It would be a concurrent issue, uh, right? Courts heard all the testimony in this matter. Uh, I'm sure, based on the motion that we consider was denied, it's going to be argued this was a more of a clerical error or a mistake. Uh, I think, based on the defense history um, and the evidence that came out of the trial, this was a mistake that it was a deliberate act uh, just to avoid uh, the government intrusion on this. So, uh, based upon that, based upon the record, uh, the state feels uh, that uh, that recommendation uh, should be made. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll get a short statement. Mm -hmm. I'd like to share with the court what I've learned from this case. Uh, for years, I've used two names interchangeably, as the court is well aware. I was making a decision in life on what may have been a faulty interpretation of the Moskowitz decision. But I never had any indication until this year that non-fraudulent use of two names could put me in legal jeopardy. Previous to November 2013, despite not having changed my name legally, I was easily able to register to vote and run for public office under the name of Ian Freeman. Hopefully the court can see how that drew me into a sense of false security and in the use of both names. The city clerk certainly knew that at the time Freeman was not my legal name but there did not appear to be a legal name required to register to vote. No issue was ever made about that, and no police investigation was conducted to my knowledge or charges filed. So when the state police paid me a visit about this current matter, it became an immediate concern, as this is not a statute that I was aware of or knowingly chose to violate. As Sergeant Andrew Player testified at trial, I went straight to the DMV the very same day. Uh, to correct the name on my license once he informed me that I was required to do so. As further evidence, the Florida license was only used for TSA identification and then surrendered on the demand of the New Hampshire State Police. My New Hampshire license and driving ability are currently in the clear, and I'm legally able to drive in all 50 states. Uh, these actions indicate that I was willing to rectify these matters once they were brought to my attention. A little bit more about me. My core activism these days has shifted to the civil side. Uh, since I have determined that continuing to perform civil disobedience is unsustainable. I'm currently involved in two civil cases that will hopefully preserve and expand individual rights in New Hampshire. I've been focusing primarily on building my radio syndication business since I was in this court criminally all the way back in 2011. Civil disobedience was not my goal in this matter. Uh, indeed, I was surprised by the investigation and the arrest. Given that the DMV form I filled out that resulted in these charges doesn't request a legal name, it's reasonable for me to have been ignorant of that being a requirement. The state police showing up at my home ended that ignorance and gave me a sense of urgency to remedy this matter. That should have been where this ended, but rather than treating me like a customer who made a mistake, I was treated like a criminal despite never being accused of having harmed anyone or having committed any actual fraud. My record in this area is crystal clear. I honor all my financial obligations under both names. I hope that despite the guilty, uh, guilty verdicts in this case, this court can see that incarceration would not serve to reform, but only punish me for what was merely a poorly informed and ultimately corrected mistake. Thank you for your consideration. I am at your mercy, and I recommend the court suspend any jail sentence or fine in this case. So you have someone, you have someone to testify for you? Mark Edgerton is here. Please raise your right hand, swear or affirm it, you say you're not true? I affirm it. That's it. Can you just pull your name for me? I'm sorry, what's that, sir? Just pull your name for me. E-D-G is I-N-G-T-O-N. Is this for amplification or just recording? You don't have to do for recording. It does amplify a bit, but also records. So is it M-A-R-K or C? M-A-R-K or C? It's K. Right. Do you have any questions you want to ask him? Oh, no, he's uh, I think he's going to have to stay.
I'm speaking, and you're speaking as to sentencing, as such the purpose of sentencing. Correct. Okay. Understood. Okay. Yeah. I Understood. wasn't, uh, I, I don't, I'm out of possession of all the facts. I didn't come to the trial. Okay. My, uh, you know, I talked to Ian about it. We didn't take this terribly seriously. Honestly, he did not, I mean, you know, as he testified here, he did not really. Could you tell, could you tell me something about who you are? Sure. Um, I'm Ian's business partner. I'm probably the um, person who knows his personality best on the planet. He uh, moved out of his parents' house at like 18. So, um, you know, he's been on his own. I've been working with him for 12 years. So I think that I can speak to his personality better than most. There's parts of it I like and parts of it I don't. Like. Um, so we spoke about this, and I can testify um, in all honesty, he, honesty, he really didn't expect this to go anywhere. He thought it was a uh, you know, case the state police were taking against him, uh, just sort of out of uh, malice, and um, didn't expect it to be found guilty. Um, he wants, to, of course, to change his name. This court knows that. He's been doing this for the course of six years or something. Somehow I can have a fake name and you know go through life just fine, but for Ian, it ends up in jail. Um, he also was under the impression that uh, in the state of New Hampshire, that it couldn't, he couldn't be classified as a resident or an occupant without uh, his consent. Apparently, he's been disabused of that notion, too. But these two facts, and these are facts, um, he believed these things, they came into conflict um, in this case. If he would have uh, filed this paperwork two days before, none of this would have been an issue. And I think that's really important in the theory of sentencing. I've got a six-year-old, and if I find him doing something he doesn't, isn't supposed to do, and he doesn't know that it's not something he's supposed to do, I don't punish him harshly over it, I correct him. Um, usually, a six-year-old, I correct him several times, but you know, in this case, we're only talking about one correction. He, um, I don't think Ian's going to learn anything from a harsh sentence here. 60 days is uh, it's pretty tough. Which really brings me to my main reason for coming. Um, I'm not here testifying for other people who are getting sentences. I'm only testifying for Ian because, well, it's going to be hardship for me in my business. Ian works for me. Um, he is the affiliate relations guy for my show. He makes telephone calls daily, getting out to get free talk live on radio stations. He, the last time he went to jail, which was 2010, I think, something like that, uh, it was it was tough. Uh, I had to hire somebody to do it, and they didn't they didn't produce. So it's going to be difficult on me if this occurs. He has two passions in life. He is unlike most people. Family, friends, these things don't concern him. He's worried about liberty activism and my radio program. And I want to make it clear that uh, my influence on Ian shouldn't be underestimated. You've noticed he hasn't sat on any police cars recently. He, um, you know, his civil disobedience has come to a most mostly a halt. He's certainly involved in uh, court action, but I think that that's probably something that we would expect from uh, an activist like him. So I'm of the opinion that a, uh, that a sentence of jail isn't going to be particularly valuable in teaching him anything. And, um, you know, that's, that's my opinion. Okay. Um, you know, maybe something else. All right. Uh, any questions for Mr. Any time. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, did you want to ask me anything? Oh, that's, that's fine. Thanks. All right, yes. All right, the court did uh, find you guilty uh, based on the facts. I thought the case was uh, uh, well tried on both sides, but uh, the, the facts uh, just weren't in your favor here. Uh, this was nothing if not plain dumb on your part. Um, this was, can't, the court can't ignore the fact that you had been at the DMV the day before, purporting to uh, register under your new name. You came back the very next day. You went ahead and did something that, that was wrong. It was illegal. I found you guilty of both those things. But um, I'm not sure that this particular case requires a jail sentence. Um, I think the 12 months is appropriate given your prior record out.
find it credible your statement that you had the flower license strictly for one purpose, especially after it was evidence that you renewed it. Uh, it's clear that you're trying to carry two licenses, but that's, I guess that's Florida's problem, not ours. So the 12 months in the House of Correct is suspended for two years and good behavior, good behavior, no felonies, misdemeanors, and major motor vehicle violations. In addition, on, those are concurrent, but in addition, 50 hours of community service at a valid not-for-profit agency or, or uh, charitable organization. 50 hours are due first, in one case, by December 1st. So to come in here and have that documented. I know there's some controversy about whether or not uh, your own agency or the Leverage Street address is a not-for-profit. I'm not going to accept oh, that. I'm not going to accept community. I'm not going to accept community service. I'm not happy someplace else in the community. If you do it in combination, as long as it adds up to the 50 hours in the first one and 50 hours in the second one, you have to come in by February 2nd with that. Understand? Uh, are you appealing to Superior Court for a jury trial? I have no plans for that. When you say no plans, you, you can have a couple of days to let me know or let the court know. I will say no. Well, if you change your mind, you can do that, but otherwise, then, then you'll have to be here on those two days for proof of the community service. We'll do the uh, what we sent in this about those days. You can go get a copy right outside right now. Yeah. Any questions? All set? Yep. What did I say? Uh, Oh, okay, yeah, now she's in there. 